Hello guys and welcome back. I've spoken at length on this channel about my love for wool. And the cool thing is that wool is available in all sorts of different forms, depending on what you're looking for. And one of my favorite types of woolen materials is tweed. And even within tweed, there are subcategories, different types of tweed, and it's almost impossible to mention tweed without talking about probably the daddy of them all, Harris Tweed. Harris Tweed is an amazing fabric with an even cooler story, and it all begins with the people who live in the Western Isles of Scotland. During the long cold evenings, the people who live in the Outer Hebrides region of Scotland used to weave fabric. And this fabric was so great, but mostly it was meant for their own uses. I mean, it gets cold out there. It was great protective wear. It was really like an OG workwear, performance fabric. This stuff was awesome, before Gore-Tex was even a thought. And it was also used for barter, so you could pay your rent in bolts of fabric or buy some food, whatever it was. It was a source of trade. There are several contributors to the rise in popularity of Harris Tweed, and one of the earliest was in 1840. The Countess of Dunmore was so fond of this fabric, and she was one of the people who really brought it to the attention of the general public. So why was Harris Tweed so popular? You gotta remember the time period, right? The 1800s, people living in cottages on an aisle. It was cold, they needed stuff to keep them warm, something that they could work in, that they could do all kinds of things in this colder climate before you know central heating and air was available. So it was a very warm fabric, a very durable fabric, and a very beautiful fabric, combining several different colors, many different colors sometimes, to create these beautiful hues. And even today, if you look at a bolt of Harris Tweed fabric, you can tell there's so many different colors in there. The complexity is just gorgeous. There's nothing that really compares to Harris Tweed. So of course, that's when the imitators began. At the end of the 19th century, imitations of Harris Tweed began popping up. These were machine-woven versions, not hand-woven versions like the people of the Isles were making. So this was making its way into England and Japan and kind of sullying the reputation of Harris Tweed because they were getting a counterfeit product. So in 1911, the Harris Tweed orb trademark was registered. And this is something you can still see today. When you see that orb right there on a piece of anything that's made out of Harris Tweed, that means it's authentic Harris Tweed and not a reproduction. And in 1933, an act of parliament was passed to protect Harris Tweed and the authenticity of that fabric. To this day, it's still the only fabric that's protected by an act of parliament. And then there was the Harris Tweed Act of 1993, the goal of which was to promote and maintain the authenticity, standard, and reputation of Harris Tweed. So this stuff was so popular that you need three different safeguards to make sure that it's the real deal that you're getting. In fact, every 50 meters of Harris Tweed is inspected by a member of the Harris Tweed Authority before it's stamped by hand and then sent along its way. And if you're interested in seeing more about how Harris Tweed is made, I can't myself go to Scotland right now, but there's a little documentary called The Big Cloth, and it's here on YouTube. There's no words, it's about four or five minutes long, but it's just beautiful visuals on how this stuff is made, bringing the sheep you know, via boat to the people who live on these islands and stuff. Really, really interesting stuff. You see people in their cottages, or in their sheds, or in a spare you know, room in their house, weaving with like, looms that are powered by bicycle power. It's so cool. And if you're interested, I will link to it below. So with the rise in demand for quality, of course, Harris Tweed has found a resurgence in popularity. I myself have several pieces from Harris Tweed, and as soon as I see that orb, I'm like, you know, maybe I should think more about buying this. Um, I have a hat, which I just showed you, a couple of coats, a jacket, a vest, some interesting pieces, and they all have that same nice, dense Harris Tweed feel. But the cool thing is that you don't have to buy a ready-made product like I have here. You can actually buy the fabric if you want from an authorized Harris Tweed dealer, or even cooler if you want it. If you have like a specific pattern or color, you know, variation in mind, you can work with a specific weaver. And as a matter of fact, the most popular is uh, Donald McKay, who works out of a shed on his property. He can't be reached by email. You can't email the guy, but he will pick up the phone and you can talk to him and you can have him make you, a, I think there's a 25 yard minimum of custom fabric. So whatever color or pattern you want, he can make for you, which you can then send off to a, you know, a bespoke maker and have made into something for you. We'll talk about bespoke. When you're actually designing your own fabrics, that is another level of custom. So while this once may have been considered an old man fabric, I think it looks dynamite in today's wardrobe and you still get the, the benefit of a hand woven fabric, something that's protected by an act of parliament and all that stuff and has that cool history to it. 
I mean, it's like a modern day Marvel. It's sort of, you know, a throwback to the old days, but with all the quality that they expected back then, and you can wear it today in a great garment that you can buy off the rack. So it's it's incredible stuff. I love it, but I'd like to know what you think. If you have any Harris Tweed items or your experience with Harris Tweed, since it's been around for so long, I'm sure there's a ton of great stories out there, and I really encourage you to share them in the comments. I love reading about that stuff and talking with you guys down there. So thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I'll catch you next time.